Hey guys, this is Sage, and welcome to Ars Magica. Now this episode is going to be relatively short. I've already tried to do this episode twice before, and it turned out to be way longer than I'd intended. What the fuck is on my... Oh, that's a skeleton. And it ended up being way longer than I'd intended it to be. So this is basically just... This is... This video is, is only to show you how to do, like, that. Magic. It's to show you how to do magic. <clears throat> straight up, nothing else. Uh... How to cast magical spells yourself. I'm in creative mode. That's why I can cast spells so rapidly. Otherwise, it uh, takes a lot longer to do. So, if you guys were having trouble like I was in casting magical spells and stuff, uh, this should explain it pretty uh, pretty efficiently. So, first, you're going to have to make an arcane compendium. I'm going to assume you guys already know how to make that. If you don't, what you have to do is you have to find a water hole in the world that looks like this. It's water that's this color rather than water that's that color. It's a, it's a darker blue, kind of shimmery, uh, almost looks like the water that you use, that, uh, I was going to say the water that you use for the Twilight Force, but it's not quite like that. Anyway, it's just, it's a slightly different pool of water, and it's usually this size, two by two. Sometimes it's too deep, but it's usually two by two by one. That's it. Then you take an item frame, place it on a block next to it, and, uh, and put a book in the item frame, and it'll turn into an arcane compendium. That is how you get started with Ars Magica 2. What is that, a cow? Fuck you, cow. <clears throat> Ignore the rest of this stuff. Most of this shit in here is uh, part of, like, bibliocraft and stuff, so it, it's not really that important. The important things are the oculus and the inscription table. Now, the oculus you learn, as soon as you create this compendium, it'll tell you about the oculus. It is under the blocks menu. It'll show you right here how to build one. You need stone bricks. Easy to make. It's just uh, smooth stone. four smooth stone makes uh, four stone bricks. <clears throat> you have to put them in a square just like that. Boom. Stone bricks. Uh, one piece of glass, a blue topaz. This is an ore that you'll mine if you're curious as to what it looks like. It looks like uh, this. Um, all you have to do is take a pickaxe, which, you know, whatever pickaxe you have. I have a diamond one. Just take your pickaxe, boom, mine it, and then you'll get some, uh, some blue quartz. Sometimes you'll drop more than one. <clears throat> it's not a fortune pickaxe. That's just... Sometimes it can drop multiple ores. Uh, if you have fortune, then it's affected by fortune as well. So you'll need a uh, blue topaz uh, to create the oculus, and you'll probably need another blue topaz <coughs> to create your first spell. I don't know. Depends entirely on what your first spell actually is and, and what you're trying to accomplish with it. So anyway, when you create an oculus and set it down, you'll be able to go up to it and uh, choose which uh, kind of components that you want to learn. Now, here's what you have to keep in mind. There are three different parts of a spell. The shape, the component, and the modifier. Now the shapes of these, <clears throat> of the, the symbols around each of these like skills, determines what it is. A square means its shape. That determines how the spell flies from your hand, or if it does at all. There's like projectile, touch, area of effect, you can combine multiple shapes together, so you can have a projectile that's also area of effect. That means that when it flies, it'll fly from your hand, and wherever it hits, it'll have an AOE, so it does, like, you know, damage over an area. That's great. You don't have to have a modifier, but you always have to have a shape and a component. The component is basically what the spell does when it hits. Those are the octagons. You have to have a shape, you have to have a component, or you will not have a spell. So make sure that if you want to start with offense, go projectile and then physical damage immediately. Or, you know, if you're feeling frisky, go for fire damage pretty quickly. I wouldn't recommend it because the further down the tree you get, like, the more expensive the spells are. So, like, level 3 spells like this, I mean, when you're first starting out, they're not very effective. They're pretty weak, and uh, they just, they cost a shit ton of mana. It's just, it's not very good. I'd say go for, like, projectile and physical damage if you want some sort of physical attack if you want a kind of hefty <clears throat> range attack go with uh go with touch and then physical damage utility touch and dig that's pretty good i don't know about wizards autumn i never use it i'm assuming it has something to do with harvesting multiple crops at once anyway you just pick modifiers and then you learn them uh, your skill points will be up there. Blue skill points are blue skills. So, for instance, like uh, this, it's blue, target non-solid blocks. I need a blue skill point. Up to level 20, 
when you're leveling up using spells, your skills will be blue. Once you're past level 20, your skills for like the next 10 levels or so are green. Then your skills for the next 5 or 10 levels are red. So that's the difference between these skill points. It doesn't, it's, it's not like offense, defense, utility skills or talents or anything like that. It just depends on like the level of the skill. <clears throat> that way you can't like race through one tree and try to get like the top level spell at level 10 or 12 or anything like that. So that's just how they control it. Anyway, after you've chosen uh, spells, uh, mechanics, I guess, the mechanics of whatever spell, you go over to an inscription table, but you have to have a book and quill, which you make with a book, a feather, and a quill. You have to go over here. <clears throat> As you learn things, they will show up on this inscription table. You pop your book down here. You choose what you want to do. I'm going to go with something easy. Actually, let's go with something kind of cool. I'm going to get a beam. And I'm going to get a dig. Let's get a digging beam. We'll call this... Uh, <clears throat> the... I don't know. The Miner's Cannon. We'll just call this the Miner's Cannon. That's great. Now, I could add a modifier if I wanted to, but... Uh, let's add color. Sure. Why not? That's it. Over here, you can't see it very well. <clears throat> Let me uh, click out of this and hit O. There, removing the book will finalize the spell recipe. If you don't have a component, then you need at least one component. It'll tell you that, just straight up. So, you know, don't think that it's uh, that you can get away with, with different things. You, like I said, you have to have a component and you have to have a shape. So then you take the book out, boom, you can make the book. <clears throat> then you have to go down here. Well, not down here, but then you have to go to wherever you've made this thing. This thing is a, uh, it's called a, a crafting altar, and you have to build them. This you have to build it with this, like the crafting altar, and then it, it actually shows you a diagram. So if you go down to like structures, that was the block, and then if you go to the structure, the crafting altar, uh, it shows you how to build this. Now determining like there are two elements that you have to understand. One is that these two things, and then these things right here so it's like two it's basically uh, two parts that really make a difference if you build like th these parts these components right here the wood basically it can be any of these it can be wood sandstone it can be uh what was the other one stone bricks which wood nether bricks quartz these are how many effects a spell can be can have that you can actually form so like for instance I just did a spell that has three effects. So that means that if I'd made this altar out of like sandstone and, and glass, like these caps right here, if they were glass instead, then the only spells I could make would have a two, uh, a two effect limit. But if I made this coal block instead of glass, then it would have a three effect limit. If I did redstone blocks, then it'd be four effects. If I did bricks and redstone blocks, then it'd be five effects, so on. You just add the two the, the two numbers together. Whatever building components you use up here, that's one number. Whatever you use down here for these uh, four caps and for this like middle bit right here, you you add that number together. They all have to be the same though, so you can't have like one coal block, one redstone block, and one iron block. They all have to be exactly the same, so it can be expensive. <clears throat> If you click on these, the green words are, uh, the green things mean that you can click on them and it'll show you how to craft them. So magic walls, really easy to make. You have to mine some stuff. I'm assuming you guys know that already. You have to mine things, it's Minecraft. So then you make a crafting altar, the actual crafting altar block, which again, you can just click it right here and it'll show you how to do it. Very easy, Ventium does. Magic walls, very easy again. Sunstone block, those are very, very difficult to make. I cheated them in because I had no idea what I was doing. And I was just trying to figure out the mod <clears throat> so that I could play with it later. So let's go ahead and we'll break this fucking lectern because I don't know how to get the book off of it without breaking it. That's just what I have to fucking do every time. So we'll put down the lectern and then you put the book on top of it. Then the book will tell you, this is a beam. It also has color and dig. This is what you need to make it work. You need an orange rune, iron shovel, iron pickaxe, one spell, parchment, blank rune, standard focus, blue topaz, blah, blah, blah. 500 essence, neutral. So let's gather up the materials super quick. 
Yeah, it turns out that Essence thing was uh, part of an es Essence gathering machine that you need to use with, like, you need Thaumcraft and stuff to, to gather Essentia, I believe. So you need 500 pieces of Essence, which I can't even, that takes, like, Essence vials and water jars and a whole bunch of bullshit. And I decided, no, that's a pain in the ass considering I'm just showing you how to make basic spells. You guys can figure that out later, or I'll figure it out later and I will show you how to gather mass quantities of essence in order to make better spells, but that will be a different video. So instead, we're just going to do dig and touch, and we're going to put touch dig, and it's called diggy fingers, because why not? So you always start with a blank rune, so after you have the book down, and you have the components that you need, you throw a blank rune in here, and then it starts the magical process. Uh... The runes start flying around, the thing lights up, and then it, the book actually shows you the next thing that you have to toss in to sacrifice. So now we need Ventium Dust, then we need a Feather, then we need our Raw Fish, and all of this stuff is in the book again. So if you look at the book at any time, it tells you everything you need, just not necessarily the proper order. Then you need Clay, an Orange Rune, an Iron Shovel, an Iron Pick... And then spell parchment. Oh, that was the last thing that I was supposed to get that I didn't get. Spell parchment's actually really easy to make. You just need a you need a piece of paper and two sticks. So you put a stick, paper, stick in a three by three crafting table. It's really easy to make, but I'm just cheating it in because it's easier. Then boom, you create a spell. Congratulations, you now have a spell. Look at it. There it is. There's the animation for it. Now you have to break this stupid lectern every time in order to take the book off of it maybe I'm doing it wrong I don't know I don't care all I know is that every time I want to take a fucking book off the lectern I have to do that so these are my spells I keep them on my bookshelf over here these are empty books and quills I made a bunch of them so I can make more spells later <clears throat> first time you use the spell uh, go out and try to use it you get to select a graphic for the spell so that you kind of know what it is there's tons to pick there are tons to choose so uh this is a digging spell so i don't know what what looks like a person digging i'm not sure whatever we'll just we'll just go with this we'll just we'll just use this then you uh you close your inventory and then that's what is selected down there. So it could be anything. Any of those portraits that you saw. And then you get to go and use your spell. So there you go. Now depending on a uh, digging, touch digging is really cool because then you just, you get to dig like all the time without a pickaxe. You just dig anything. So it's really freaking useful. So like, let's... Let's throw some obsidian down here. Now I believe that different materials take different like amounts of mana, so it's two. We're at 260 right now. All right, I guess. Oh, you have to be in touch range. Nah, we can't do obsidian, unfortunately. So there are limitations based on the level of the spell. I'm guessing you can level it up to make it more effective. The spell is really cheap, though. Look cost three mana and that's with uh 12 fatigue so that means that you can do all you, you know you can break all sorts of blocks i'm assuming you can break blocks up to <clears throat> excuse me with touch and dig you can break blocks that require a stone pickaxe so it's a good emergency spell to have if you like, if, if your pickaxe breaks or something, you can just be like, oh shit, I'm down in a hole and my pickaxe is broken, how am I going to get out? Boom, 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 it's fine. Also, you know, it doesn't mine quite as fast as a shovel, but it's a nice alternative. And it is a really, really good, really, really easy way to uh, level yourself up at the beginning. So there you go, I'm now level 10. And I unlocked a new entry in my book, which you can go back and you can look at, and it'll show you like the new entries and stuff. Fire Guardian, I tried to fight that thing, it is a nightmare, don't try to do it, don't ever do it, it's not a good idea. Oh my god, these are things that I've learned. Wizards Autumn, oh. You can focus your digging to a small radius that directly affects leaves. 
It's a built-in AoE that can be modified with radius modifiers and is affected by your casting mode. You can use it to clear those pesky hard-to-reach leaves. Great. Oh, the other thing that I was that I wanted to talk about. Yeah, this is casting mode. So since casting mode like determines how powerful your spell is and how much mana you use, I guess like right now we can't use you know we can't break like these for instance. If you hit C and change your casting mode, it'll use a little bit more mana. See now it costs ten mana. But you can mine more powerful blocks. So now you can mine those things that you couldn't mine before. And let's try uh, let's try obsidian one more time. So I bet we can't mine obsidian. Yeah, you can't mine obsidian with normal mode. But if you go into augmented mode, which you have to learn. It's actually a skill that you learn. See, the mana cost is substantially higher. But... You can mine even obsidian, so you no longer need a diamond pick in like 30 minutes to dig this up. So that's how you make your spells more powerful, just by changing your casting mode. And that's about all there is to it. Uh, so just, you know, practice with it on low mode. Just hit C, and down at the bottom of the screen you'll see that little moon uh, next to your like blue bar. That's your mana. The moon represents your casting mode, so if the moon is waning, if it's a little moon like that, then it's uh, diminished mode, which uses the lowest amount of mana, and uh, also has the lowest like power. This is normal, it has slightly more mana consumption and more power. This is augmented, that's the highest mana consumption and the highest amount of power, so, you know. Change things around how you wish, uh, as you will. But there's all sorts of fun spells and combinations that you can learn. I would love to have shown you guys how to, uh, what the crazy ass laser beam would have looked like. But I honestly, I don't know right now how I would gather up, uh, essence, uh, for you guys. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to look into, uh, how to farm essence more efficiently. Because as of right now, I'm not really sure how to do it. Uh, especially not 500 essence. That's... That may not be very much, and if it's Essentia that you get from Thalmcraft, then I understand, and I know how to do it. It would take me a little bit more time, though, and I'm just not going to mess with it right now. However, I don't know if Neutral is an actual type of Essentia, or if it just means it doesn't need a specific type of Essence. It just it doesn't care. It just needs power, basically, and any type will do. So there you go. That's it. That's, uh, that's Diggy Fingers. That's pretty much the easiest basic spell that you can learn and I would recommend you start off with that if you're starting off and you're trying to pick which spell it may not be the flashiest but it'll level you up really quickly which means you'll have more mana to utilize you'll be able to be more powerful and of course you'll be able to dig things without using a pickaxe you can just walk around and just dig shit up which is great uh, because you're gonna have to do a lot of digging and this makes it easier so that's it guys, I hope uh, I hope this video helped and you now know how to create your own spells. Uh, let me know if you like this mod and if you like this uh, this game. And if you are one of my regular viewers, then let me know if you'd rather me like continually play this because I'm having fun with it and I wouldn't mind showing you guys like a legitimate playthrough where I'm not cheating and stuff. But just a legitimate playthrough where I'm trying to become a more powerful mage because there are tons of bosses to fight in this world. Uh, on this mod specifically, there's like, I don't know, six different bosses. Fire Guardian, Water Guardian, Air, Earth, Nature. Uh, I think there's a Void Guardian. There's all sorts of really powerful, really cool bosses uh, that you can potentially fight. And uh, I'd love to do it. I'd love to become more powerful and show you guys how to do it. I'd like to play it with some of my friends too if you guys are interested in that. So let me know. Uh, until next time, guys, this is Say- Oh my god, it's a fucking mutant chicken! Oh, run! Oh, what is that? Oh, shit. Thomcraft has made things far more dangerous. That is, that is flux. That is a poison flux area. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, until next time, guys, uh... This is Sage, and as always, peace!